everyone. Welcome back to Table Talk with the Half Send Bros. Hello. Uh, I'm your host, Tony Laskovich, and this is my compatriot, Gingy, the flaming beard man himself. It burns. <laughs> oh, <laughs> how you been, man? Uh, good. 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 Um, a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on, but, um, yeah. you know, with... We both got the COVIDs not... Not yeah. long ago. Yeah. How you feeling? Do you, any lingerings? I got, a little, a I'm, little like 90 per, I'm like 99% uh, rebounded from the whole thing. Like I feel fine. Like I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel sick at all, but like, like that shit kind of lingers. Like there's like yeah. just something off. Like you'll get this like random cough or like you cough something up for no, like it's, it's like there's this little part of it that doesn't want to go away. And I've heard horror stories, too, about people. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like both of us had very mild cases compared to the horror stories that we've, I'm sure, both heard. Um, One of the bad ones is taste buds. Like, I cook a lot, mm. and I would, my heart would be broken <laughs> if, if I couldn't taste anything forever. Yeah. Um, the, only, the only really, th like, lingering effect that I still have is, like, the occasional phlegm. And like a tickle in the back of your throat, like you, that need to cough, mm. but it's, it's Thanks just a visual. It's just phlegm. Nice. Yeah. I'm well, phlegmy. That is actually not today's topic. Uh, it, it isn't COVID. Um, it is something much more somber, believe it or not. And that is, uh, as most people can remember when nine 11 happened, there was this feeling you kind of had where it didn't matter where you went. There was kind of like this, uh, this, energy that kind of washed over the entire nation where um no matter where you went you run into people and you just everyone looked like um their dog just died that's that's just the feeling it was universal um here where we live uh something happened back in 1998 that had the same effect here and, and not just in our community but uh i would say west michigan as a whole it has been um it has been, it was known as, it may still be known as the uh, worst mass murder in modern history in West Michigan. And it was, and it was literally, it happened five miles from my house, believe it or not. Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, I used to live over by Meyer. Meyer is a uh, grocery store that was then located right next to my high school that I went to. Not to be confused with Myers. That <laughs> doesn't exist. <laughs> That's not a thing. Um, yeah, a lot of people say Meyer. It's a, if you're not from here, you, uh, yeah, it's so, a joke. So at the time, my, now my high school has since moved somewhere uh, nearby, but back then my high school was located right next to Meyer. Um, I live not far from there. And, uh, I was uh, a few years out of high school. Now the, the person in question, the murderer, uh, he went to the same high school I did. And I think my wife was like a year under him. I, I feel like she was like, I think he was 18 at the time and she was 17. So this is like, you're talking about this family, uh, was like, one degree of separation from people that we're close to and uh like i'm sure she's i mean it's high school right and you she's probably had she had interactions on some level with him and you know I, I she didn't hang out with him or anything like that i mean the guy was a little off or whatever but um these murders actually happened uh, on for thank their thanks. It was a belated Thanksgiving dinner of all times that this would happen. And oof, man, this is uh, sometimes some of these types of uh, murder stories really really get you. Yeah, especially when, uh, like I said, when this happened, it was uh, it really affected our community. You were you were a young chap at the time. Do you, you probably yeah. do you if have, it, do you if it little... happened in ninety eight, I was seven years old. Okay. Um so there's like and and to the tune of these kinds of stories, like um 
my girlfriend is like super into like these murder podcasts mm -hmm. and like she listens to these in her car on her way to work and yeah. wherever um and like this kind of stuff like now that like i'm in the situation that i'm in like uh to be a father mm -hmm. um like she's like kind of weaning off of them because like some of the stories that she listens to are like about uh these like true stories that mm -hmm. like kids getting killed oh, on gosh. Halloween. There's one I watched a couple of days ago. That was, that was real bad. I'll share that story in a, in a later podcast. And, and I'm listening, I'm listening to these with her when she's listening to them in the car when we're together. And I'm like, man, I kind of like low key don't want to listen to this. Cause this is like giving me some paranoia, <laughs> like about yeah. Halloween stuff. I'm like, man, my kid's going to be out there alone too. Like That's a crazy I don't want that shit to happen. The idea that something like this could even happen. Um, this was now as, as I share how this story developed, uh, how this all took place, it's going to probably blow your mind. Yeah, where probably you're going to be like, wow. And the fact that it happened right here where we live is just absolutely, it, it's one of those things if someone were to tell you the story as it unfolded real time when it happened, you would, you would just sit there and like, you'd be dumbfounded. Like you, mm. if you're a person of em empathy, it's just something that you can't. So the, the young man in question, his name was Seth Pravaki. And he, uh, he went to Reese Buffer High School, 18 years old. And how this whole thing started, ironically, was uh, it's simple. Uh, I, I, now, it goes deeper than that. As I say, it was a, just a simple disagreement with his dad. But what it boiled down to is he and his father had a long history of not getting along. His dad is actually a school teacher, too, hmm. uh, in the Reese Buffer. I, I think it was Reese. I, mean, I, I'm, I assume I, but he and his he and his dad didn't have a good history and they, they probably argued about a lot of petty things the, the mm -hmm. moral of the story is they just didn't get along very well and I think it boiled down to like an argument over a vehicle uh, it got heated and his dad uh, things came into a head and his dad wanted him to move out like immediately Okay. Uh, and, and you got to assume on some level, there's probably gut instincts his dad had about, you just need to be out yeah. of here. And I think some of the angst he felt towards the rest of his family was that no one supported him in his fight against like everyone took his dad's side. And in hindsight, probably just with the information we know is probably for good reason. Yeah. Um, uh, depending on how you look at that, either through his eyes or his family's eyes, like it, like it's kind of a muddled thing. Like you don't, yeah. like in his eyes, he probably thought that That's he was a hundred percent in the yeah. right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, well, I mean, in hindsight though, he, there was a lot of remorse, but, yeah. um, his, so on the day in question, he and his father, they get into an argument, his dad leaves and in a fit of rage, he goes up into his dad's closet and grabs a 22. Okay. Um, and where this started is he walked into the living room. His, now, now his dad has, le has left. This is the person that he was, he was motivated. He was pissed at. Yeah. It was his dad. He walks in the living room with the gun hidden behind his, his back where his brother was watching TV. His brother was 19 years old. His brother's like one of his closest friends, I think, at, at the time. Like they were mm -hmm. close. Uh, he came up behind him and shot him in the back of the head. Uh, and this is, it's tough for me to recount this, you know, because, yeah. but yeah, he just came up to his brother and shot him in the back of the head. Now, um, he grabs his brother's body, drags it downstairs to hide it because he understands now that things are started. They're underway. Yeah. Um, He's past the point of no return. Yeah. So dad returns with his grandpa, mm. so dad's father. They enter uh, maybe through the garage, I believe, into the house, and he walks by them. 
again with the the gun uh, hidden behind his back, turns on them both and shoots both of them in the back of the head. And he had to shoot his grandpa a second time because he didn't die right away. Mm. Yeah. So now we have three people. Yep. All shot in the back of the head. Three family members. Um. So, uh, in the in, two in, of them, un completely unrelated to the reason why he's doing this. Correct. Yeah. So now we have his brother, his dad, and his grandpa. Dad and his grandpa are laying there um, in the entryway um, inside the house. He goes upstairs, um, and his mom is just getting out of the shower, mm -hmm. enters the bathroom, and shoots her in the back of the head. Um, this, this all must have happened fairly quick. Well, and that's the thing you would think uh, with these gunshots going off in the house, uh, you'd think you'd hear that, but I mean, it's a 22. Yeah, it's, yeah, uh, maybe. It's, it's hard to tell. Like, no, 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 one, no one was there other than him and his mom at that point. So it's impossible to tell whether or not she heard it. Well, I mean, at this point, he had killed three people with her yeah. up, upstairs. He's in the shower. I don't, I don't know. Maybe the sound of the shower muffled those noises, but he went up, entered the bathroom, and then shot his mom in the back. So now we have four family members all shot in the back of the head. So um, I, he's kind of assessing everything at this point that he'd done. Mm -hmm. And uh, he comes back downstairs. He's going through whatever process he's going through at this point. And his brother's girlfriend, whom mm. was there to eat for Thanksgiving dinner, enters the house. And she's under the belief initially, because she was probably so like, what in the, you know, holy shit. She's, she thought it was all a joke for, obviously, a split second. Maybe she didn't realize, she didn't, you know, her brain is probably trying to calculate that. Yeah, you walk into that kind of situation, yeah. your brain isn't going to immediately go, something's wrong. Yeah. Like, you can't, you can't possibly think that. At, mm -hmm. Like, even if it's just for a split second, you think, everything's okay. Mm -hmm. And then you know. Yeah, so he hears her enter and comes up behind her and then shoots her in the back of the head. Oh, my God. So now we're at five people. Yeah. All shot in the back of the head. Um, yeah, his... His brother's girlfriend was bad timing, wrong place, wrong time. So all this takes place now. We've he's we've got four dead family members and a girlfriend. So we have five murders, five in one house. Yeah, within a, a super short span of time. It would have to be. So there's yeah. bodies literally all throughout this house, littered. You know, uh, there's. I don't know how I would process that seeing people with feelings that you hear about, just knowing that their life is over. And yeah. you got to think being shot in the back of the head is not, uh, there's an exit wound. There's like, it, it, it's got to be pretty gruesome. And to see people, human beings that you love slash care about, uh, I don't know. Rage makes people do some some pretty crazy things, but um, so he's now he's he's got a big mess on his hands. You know what I mean? So his first instinct is to call one of his best friends. So he calls his his buddy, and he uh, he's like, "Hey, I need you to get over here and help me. I just killed my whole family." And my brother's girlfriend. So his buddy comes over like a half hour later. And uh, this is kind of where their stories get a little muddled because the friend made it sound like he wasn't aware what he was coming over to. Yeah. But uh, Seth, uh, in his confession, stated that he talked his friend into it. Yeah. And, and the reason why that's important is because... Uh, Initially, uh, his friend was also charged with five um, murders. So 
Um, and that's because at, at that point he was in an accessory. He was helping yeah. him. So these two are trying to come up with a game plan now of what they're going to do with five bodies and his friends helping him as best they can. And he's in, in his friend's defense. He's, he's overwhelmed by the whole thing. And he told police later on that he was actually, and, and I believe this to some extent that he was under the, like he was intimidated into doing this. Yeah. Um, I like like he was he was afraid for his life that if he didn't do it his life was in jeopardy as well which absolutely like you it, you get a phone call and one of your best friends says hey I killed my entire family I need you you specifically to come help me mm -hmm. hide the bodies and you say no that's your best friend he knows where you live well, what is he going to do well the thing is it was at home safe he has a lot of options yeah so that's why I believe maybe he did. Um, and you, you got to think in their recollection of events, it's probably hard for both of them. It's a pretty adrenaline filled. Yeah. Um, but I would think if it went down that way that uh, I believe the story that maybe he showed up and then found out what was going on and then, yeah. and then felt the pressure of, I got to help. I don't know if, uh, I would want to get mixed up if, if I don't care who you are, if you called me over and say, I just murdered my entire family, come over and help. Right. That I would be, I would, I, I don't think that I would, yeah, be over in 30. Uh, I don't yeah. think so. Um, yeah, let me grab some Taco Bell on the way real quick. Yeah. Do you want anything? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Napkins. Yeah. So, uh, so in their plight to, uh, to get rid of these bodies, uh, they realize that some of them are too heavy because of the dead weight and they're having yeah. a really hard time disposing of them. And they come up with this idea that they're going to try to make it look like a, uh, like it was a robbery gone wrong. So they're trying to do that and figure this out. And at one point, uh, I believe his friend's name was Stephen Wallace. He, gives the gun to him and he leaves for a church thing, like a youth group thing. Mm -hmm. And then he comes back and you know, that and, and they're trying to figure this out. And, uh, so they're in the garage and they're dragging bodies around and they're, they're trying to wrap them up in sheets and their, their, uh, initial plan was to bury them. And then they changed their idea to make it look like, okay, no, that's, this is too hard. It was a lot of work. Yeah. They're trying to clean up, do all this stuff. They're just, they probably realize this crime scene, like they're, they're in way over their head to try to, to make this look like, or, you know what I mean? Yeah. To dispose of bodies and make it look like anything else other than, um, what it was. And, uh, so they're in the garage and they hear a car pull up and because about 12 hours went by since uh, April boss, that's Je Jedediah, his brother's girlfriend, okay. um, had been gone and she was supposed to work a th uh, the third shift at her, her job. Her work called, very unusual for her to not show up. So it was on her parents' radar. They went over to the Pravaki house and showed up over there. And thank God they spooked him and they ran. So a little while later, they discover the crime scene. They see these, they come across the bodies and they make a, uh, they make a phone call to, to law enforcement. Law enforcement comes over and uh, they end up catching uh, his buddy. Okay. But he gets away. And uh, he gets away and he's traveling on foot at this point. It's going through the woods and ended up like sleeping under a pine tree. I think he said in his confession. So he slept for several hours. Next day he gets up and he tries hitchhiking. Mm -hmm. So he hitchhikes a friend from high school spots him and picks him up. Uh, she ends up driving him to a mutual friend's house and dropping him off. And the mutual friend was not home. I, I don't know if she already knew what was going on or found out after dropping him off. Yeah. I, want, I, I, would, I would suspect that she found out after dropping him off, but she ended up calling police 
in telling them where he was. Right. And, and he was hi- keep in mind, this is 1998. So yeah. information doesn't travel as fast as it does now. Like yeah, he, for she, sure. would, she would have had to have found out after the fact. Yeah. We just had a recent murder here and the whole entire planet knew about it. Yeah. And within minutes, I'm sure. Yeah. And like the, <laughs> with, with the whole like hiding in the woods, again, it's 1998. Like without people combing the woods, they would have probably taken a really long time to find him even there. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's like, no, yeah. it's, it's early tech. We didn't have anything to just go like thermal search for people in the woods. Now there's uh there was the convicted, the Brian laundry, there's people's trail cams picking him up and yeah. stuff like that. You know what I mean? Um, so law enforcement, um, swoops in and they arrest him and he confesses to the murders obviously uh long story short with his friend he did end up getting acquitted okay um however later on uh i think the deal was like don't get in any other trouble mm-hmm. and he strung together a felony and a couple other uh several misdemeanors maybe more than one felony and he got He ended up getting in trouble and had to serve some time for that thing because later on he ended up getting into quite a bit of trouble through life. And I don't know to what extent all this affected me. You got to think there's seeing, just seeing that and for it would give you some ptsd that's some pretty gruesome stuff i don't, I don't know absolutely for what it, it, maybe he wasn't a good kid already or maybe i i don't there's just so many things that you know yeah we, we evolved through life he was a young guy but um he was acquitted of the murders um and not held accountable for that because i mean they they believed him that yeah. he was under duress and the friend yeah the yeah. friend okay yeah, the friend. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Seth Bravaki uh, was obviously sentenced to life uh, very quickly, actually, too. This, this, um, the case moved along very quickly and he was sentenced right away. And uh, he was serving time in the Upper Peninsula. And I believe it was a medium security prison up there. Okay. Which. Is kind of, I wouldn't think of. That doesn't seem appropriate. Right. So when I heard that it was medium security, I was thought to myself, hmm, because what happened in 2010, he, uh, he and two other uh, inmates also uh, convicted of murder they overpowered a tr- tractor trailer driver in the prison. They stole his tractor trailer and they drove it through the fence. And he w- technically was escaped. Yeah. But only for moments. They drove the uh, tractor trailer through one of those, you know, big barbed wire fences and um, so they drove the, drive this tractor trailer through the, they maybe make it about a hundred yards. And for reasons unknown, I don't know why this happened. They ditched the, the vehicle. Like uh, now I understand you probably want to make it to woods or whatever, but they, they jump out and they run for whatever reason. Now the corrections officers are screaming for them to stop or they'll shoot. Yeah. And they continued to run, and ironically, Seth was shot in the back of the head and killed. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Arma. Yeah. So this was 11 years ago. He was shot in the back of the head. How ironic is that? Now, the other two uh, guys um, immediately surrendered right after that. Yeah. So they probably were like, yeah, I also don't want to meet this, the same fate. So I'm just going to, but they, they surrendered and, uh, yeah, pretty wild. Now, a lot of people, it's, it's a wild, widely searched thing. Um, I've searched it many times over the years. Just, I, it's just this weird curiosity of where exactly the house was, because when this first happened, if you lived there, you drove by the house. It was yeah. like you felt like you were compelled to. 
Um, from what I understand, there is a very, very popular water park that's right there. It's called Michigan's Adventure, obviously. You know yeah. what it is. Uh, that's where their house was located. It was right across the street from Michigan's. Uh, oh, wow. That's like, that's like, hit that hits home. Yeah. Like. It's, it's right here. Holy shit. Yeah. I heard that Michigan's Adventure bought the home and had it demolished. So good on them. Yeah. Because, uh... Contrary to popular belief, if real estate has a murder that happens in the real estate, they do not have to disclose that in the sale of the real estate. Do you know that? That's terrifying. Yeah. Now, that's a tough one to like, no, no, nothing happened here. You know, that's that'd right. be a, a, a tough uh, you know, I, I feel like a lot of time would have to go by for people or to not be on someone's radar. Hey, wasn't this where? Yeah. I mean, it's. And somebody's going to know you, if you're buying. It. You could, on, on the real estate agent behalf, you could chalk it up to blissful ignorance and just go, I'm not getting in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. I want to make some money. This is my job. Yeah. But at the same time, like, as a good person, I no. can't see myself ignoring that fact. Yeah. Now. I've also heard of people knowingly purchasing real estate where a homicide happened. Yeah. Uh, for whatever reason, they're fine with it. And, and I think, I think the, the thought process is typically um, they are, the, the homes are as deeply discounted as you can imagine. Oh, yeah. They would be. They, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't do it. Could, yeah. could you? I don't know. Let, let's, say, let's say that house was up for sale. And let's say on this, in this market... Let's say it's a, now I'm just throwing shit out there. Let's say it was a $300,000 home in any market. Like it was mm-hmm. a, let's say it's a three, four, like let's say it's a pretty nice house. Like a nice house. Yeah. yeah. And let's say it was for sale for, okay, because I want this hypothetical to work because there's a lot of variables here. You could buy it for a deeply discounted price. Let's, let's say it was free, mm-hmm. but you had to live in it. Okay. Um, just for this hypothetical, I'm not going to include the fact that I know what my girlfriend's answer would be <laughs> so, um, because she is very um, attuned to things like that. Uh, the answer would be immediately no for her. Yeah. Um, so just taking into consideration my own opinion, if it was a free $300,000 house, I think I could conveniently forget what happened i couldn't do it five <laughs> five murders it's no i don't want to say that well if it's just one let, maybe i could get let me, I, but I do i think if it was one and the circumstances were like the fatality happened outside of the i don't know i still think it, at the end of the day i don't think i could do it let me let me add it. a caveat to my answer if any freaky shit started happening i'm out that second so, after I after I start living in the house, some creepy shit happens. I'm done. I'm out. The, gone. The, so so, <laughs> at the end of the day, there's probably is does it does our answer actually boil down to the amenities of what the house is like? Let's say it's a fifteen million dollar mansion and five people and it's like, well, what wing did they die? <laughs> right. Know? You know, well, if it's a ten thousand square foot house and it didn't happen in this area here, and I don't really need to go into the library too often, like <laughs> maybe I could get over that, but uh maybe you just seal off that room. Yeah. So I think I when we're honest with ourselves, I do believe it would come down to um just exactly how nice the yeah but, it's but it's a matter you, of can you can you justify the value over your own emotions mm-hmm. about the situation yeah so so here's another question let's say you had a friend under those circumstances that acquired a home close friend yeah would you feel comfortable going over to their house for to watch the ufc fights and eat chips and dip and hang out and have a couple beers absolutely i don't have out. to stay there uh, <laughs> i can go home <laughs> Do you, do you th- I, I, the thing is, though, I think it would always be on my mind. I would, I would obsess about it. I'd be thinking yeah. about it all the time that five people 
were murdered in this home. I would, I would obsess about it. I would, I don't think I would ever not think I, it did this, this particular incident didn't even happen in my home. And during that time, it was in the front of my mind for, I bet you two weeks. Yeah. That's all I could think about. I was, I was just, and, and from a state of like, just deep empathy for something like that. It's, it's just something like, cause I'm, I'm so wildly empathetic. I kept putting myself in those people's shoes. Like what, what were they going through in those moments? Uh, you know, I'd like to think that nothing because I, all of them were ambushed. Yeah. Every single one of them. There it's, wasn't there, at, at one moment they were thinking everything was perfectly fine and normal. And then the next moment, nothing mm -hmm, because yeah. nobody saw it coming. Mm -hmm. So then I look at it through the eyes of that. Those people don't get to have any more experiences. Yeah. They don't get to, um, love other people. They don't get to have, um, they don't get to have, I mean, his, his, his brother and her, his girlfriend, they, who knows, maybe they, ha they were on a, a path of getting married and having children and they, they never got to, ex that's, that's a really young age, you know, they didn't get yeah. the, so many experiences they missed out on in, in mom, dad, grandpa. I mean, they didn't deserve that. And their, their lives were cut short. They're, they're, they're robbed of experiences. Yeah. And I guess that's like, um, if you, if you really think about it, like how much, how many experiences did you have since the time that you were eight till now? Oh gosh, I've been, I've been Seems like a six lifetime. different people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I've yeah. evolved as a person over that amount now of time. Now imagine so everyone you know didn't, like that they didn't experience you having your experiences because they never happened. Mm -hmm. Like how different would everyone else's life be? Yeah. Super wild to think about. Yeah, so... uh Pretty crazy that this happens so close to home, like literally in yeah. our backyard. To, to, the, to the could I get over it kind of thing if a friend moved in, um, as, as blatantly as I can put this, I'm kind of a it is what it is kind of person when it comes to things that I can't change. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the grand scheme of things, if that were in reality right now a thing that had happened... In a friend of mine had moved into that house. I think because of when it happened, um, I think enough time has passed for me personally to have gone, oh, that's a super interesting thing that happened in this house. Mm -hmm. Where are the chips? Yeah. I mean, time heals a lot of things. Now, obviously, I told you in the beginning, I obsessed about it for a couple of weeks, yeah. and I don't obsess about it anymore other than, you know, I caught up on the the history of events and how they happened to to talk about it today yeah and um other than that there's probably been half a dozen occasions since it happened um literally over 20 years ago whereas uh yeah this is 20 happened 23 years ago uh yeah. there's probably been half a dozen times over that 23 years where it's crossed my mind again and i've like looked things up uh i probably yeah. looked him up in otis to see you know at, at, at some point or another and then you know hearing the news that he was uh he was shot uh when he was pretty close to having escaped i mean he was legit on the outside of the fence briefly yeah. that would have that would have shaken the whole state if that if that person had escaped so so when that um, when that news was released and it was confirmed that he was shot and killed during a prison escape, um, it resurfaced a lot of feelings for, for people around here. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, now you were pretty young, so you didn't get to experience that on that level, you know, to, to. Yeah. Stuff like I was seven, stuff like that uh, was like, Oh, mom and dad are upset. Yeah. Uh, where are my Legos? Mm hmm. But, uh, yeah, pretty wild that this happened in our backyard. No, it's not that we've never had a murder case for multiple people since then, but this was, uh, I would still believe this is the number one most horrific, uh, mass murder 
in West Michigan history. I, I, I can't think of any since since it was given that title that have surpassed that. It would I would remember them, you yeah. know. And that's so, that's crazy close to home too. I've probably driven past where the house was thousands of times. Mm-hmm. That's on the way to my grandparents' house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty wild. So uh, yeah, let us know in the comments if this was something that uh, you've heard about yourself. Uh, obviously, it happened quite some time ago, but a uh, really wild story and something that hits really, uh, really hard to my heart and my home uh, because uh, these. These individuals were like one degree of separation for myself and people that I cared about. So really, really crazy. And uh, yeah, let us know uh, what your uh, what your perspective is on this story. And uh, we'll join you guys in the next one. We'll probably do a lot more of these uh, these murder stories because uh, I find them fascinating. How uh, some of these, you know, the mentality of ah, yeah just uh well my wife and i watch a lot of these like unsolved and and solved uh mysteries when they figure the stuff out and uh just fascinating like yeah uh but yeah until then we will see you guys in the next podcast slash vidya and we love your faces okay bye bye